Hi everyone, I'm Leah, and today we are going to be talking about biofilm formation. So, two of the key main players in forming biofilms are fimbrae and glycocalyx. Fim fimbrae are small projections found on the exterior of microbial cells. These projections are similar to um, bristles, so they're sticky, and they allow um, for adherence to other surfaces, including um, other microbes, so that a um, whole bunch of population of microbes can stick together. Glycocalyx is a layer made up of glycoproteins and glycolipids, and this forms um, a layer that surrounds the cell membranes of some microbes. Um, so once these microbes start to attach to a surface and um, to one another, the glycocalyx forms around uh, these microbes, and it acts as a physical barrier or a protective layer. And it also um, plays some role in um, additional adhesion to uh, different surfaces. So forum sensing also assists in the development of biofilms. Forum sensing is the ability to detect the population density of cells in a given area, and then these the same cells can go on to respond to this density um, through gene regulation to figure out where is the best place for them to go and what phenotype to express. So in terms of biofilm formation, um, they would express the phenotype of the biofilm to go on and adhere to additional cells um, or in the form of the glycocalyx to go and uh, produce a slimy or sticky protective barrier um, around these cells. So if a cell comes near um, a group of cells and they can sense that population density, whatever is most beneficial, if that is to join the biofilm, then they will undergo gene regulation to do so and change their phenotype and further develop that biofilm. Biofilms are persistent uh, due to the protective layer um, that's formed from the glycocalyx. This surrounds the biofilm and makes them very difficult to treat and remove. Um, a lot of different chemicals and antibiotics have difficulty penetrating the biofilm. Um, so they're very difficult to get rid of and they're persistent. So once they form, um, they stay there for a while. Uh, biofilms, they do interact with the host immune system. So if it's a biofilm made up of bacterial cells, um, they might cause a biofilm infection. Um, biofilms, they inhibit the host's ability to identify that the bacteria are there. These biofilms kind of act as a camouflage, so it takes the host and the host cells a little bit longer to get to them. Um, and it also acts as a physical barrier against um, cells within the host immune system, such as um, like white blood cells. So it makes it harder to detect the presence of these bacteria and also harder uh, for cells that are trying to fight off the infection to get to these actual bacterial cells. It also um, decreases the effectiveness of some antibiotics. So once the body knows, okay, we have an infection here, um, and they might get treated with antibiotics, it's harder for those antibiotics to do their job and treat these bacteria. Some methods for controlling biofilms, a common treatment like we just talked about, are antibiotics. Um, but due to the protective layer and different chemicals not being able to penetrate, the most effective way is to do a combination antibiotic therapy. Um, so that includes having at least two, if not more, antibiotics being administered at once. Um, and this has been seen to be more successful at penetrating these biofilms. Um, since they are so persistent and hard to get rid of. For biofilms in the environment, um, they might coat different medical devices, stuff like that, with uh, two or more antibiotics as a, a preventative treatment for infection. But for biofilms such as in like pools or uh, waterways, a lot of the times they'll use stuff such as biocides, um, ion coatings. This is all to prevent that slime layer and um, the population of bacteria accumulating together. All right, thank you for listening. Bye.